Um, our agenda for today, we're going to talk a little bit about the reasons why companies are relocating. I think the number one reason is cost, and we'll look at what exactly we'll mean, we mean by cost. Uh, we're going to look at some of the regulatory trends that are also kind of pushing uh, companies outside of this Shanghai, Beijing, first tier city areas. We're going to talk about our services, what exactly we can do in this arena um, as a first step in the research and advisory stages. And then we're going to talk about our past case studies to kind of give you a more realistic, implemented idea of what we've done before. Okay. So why relocate? Number one, costs. Right. Um, there's three main costs that I want to talk to you about. It's land, labor, and opportunity. So just going with the first one, land cost. I'm sure all of you are aware of land cost, right? So here we have this beautiful graph, right? So industrial average land costs in China's main cities, by main cities we usually mean top tier one. Um, from 2013 to 2017, we see land costs in USD per square meter rising about 110 to 127. That's quite a large jump, right? And if we look at um, business and service average land costs, also quite a, a precipitous increase, right, similarly. So let's look at the first two tier one cities, Beijing and Shanghai. Here it is for Beijing, 255.9 to 424.6, quite a lot. As well as Shanghai, not as much, but still something that will make you feel the pain, right? 280.8 to 395.3. And if we look at what this means in terms of percentage increase, right? Here's the national average. Here is uh, the percentage increase in Shanghai over that si same time period, 40.8%. That's almost 50% increase. And then we see the same for Beijing, almost 66% increase. And that is really quite, quite a lot. So what about tier two cities? Right, so for the purposes of this presentation, we've chosen two top tier two top two top tier two cities. Right, so the first one is Suzhou, which I'm sure many of you have heard about, and the second one is Chongqing, something a little bit more inland, uh, becoming more and more important and interesting for a lot of foreign investors in China. Excuse me. Yes. May I ask why Be Beijing prices are higher than Shanghai? What are the main factors? Uh, demand. Um, uh, because Beijing is obviously the capital, right? And a lot of companies feel that they need to be in the capital in order to pursue some of their business interests. Is supply uh, higher in Shanghai than Beijing as well? Is what? Supply. supply is supply? Um, it comes and goes. There has been an expansion in the industrial land area, or I should say the business services area. If you look at, let's say, Hongqiao, that opened up a lot of office space. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, so top tier two cities, uh, less of a precipitous jump compared to what we see in Beijing and Shanghai. And the same thing in Chongqing. Chongqing's rising quite fast as well, but they're coming from a much lower level. I don't know if we look at percentage increases there, quite low, right? Very, very different from Beijing and Shanghai. About 4.3% in Chongqing and 4% in Suzhou. So putting it all together, if we can just look at it all on one sheet, right? It's just vastly different. Here we have the national average, Chongqing, Suzhou, Shanghai, and then Beijing. That's probably the most expensive space in Shanghai right now. Excuse me. Yeah. Will you share our presentation yeah. later? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy to. Uh, Zoe, just a question out of curiosity. Is Beijing including Tianjin area, or is it just the Beijing? Just Beijing, Beijing yeah. Okay, Tianjin would count as also a top tier two city. Yeah, but we wanted to get a feel for East Asia as well as Inland Asia. Okay, so mm. that was the first reason was land costs, right? So let's move on to the second major cost that companies have, which is labor cost. So here we have the national average payroll of urban employment in USD from 2012 to 2016, going from 7,385.3 to 10,669, right? And then here's the total payroll of urban employment from 2012 to 2016. 
just steadily up and up and up. And I think this is true for a lot of what you have experienced. Um, usually wage inflation tends to go up every year and it's very common for foreign companies if they want to remain competitive to have to keep up with that, with that trend. Let's look at tier one cities, Beijing and Shanghai yet again. Same upward movement over the same time period, same upward movement over the same time period. <coughs> Beijing, again, is the most popular and thus the more expensive. Okay, and here we have the percentage change in average annual payroll. So this is really a national phenomenon that wages are increasing. Um, Shanghai actually, relative to the national and to Beijing, is performing quite in the middle here. I don't really know why that is, if anyone knows, any HR expert. Um, and then if we look at tier two cities, Suzhou and Chongqing also have quite uh, an increase as well, an upward trend. And again, it's more muted for, sorry, they should say Suzhou and Chongqing. Okay, so if we look again at percentage change, here's the average, here's Chongqing, Suzhou, Shanghai, and Beijing. So I think wherever you go, labor cost is going to be a problem for a lot of employers to keep up with. The main thing is what base you're coming from. So if you're coming from a city that's already expensive, you're going to have to deal with increases in wage every year. If you're coming from a city that already has, has a low base, then maybe it's less of a problem for you. Okay, moving on. So why relocate cost number three, opportunity? Maybe this isn't an exact cost, and we were talking here about uh, opportunity cost, right? So let's play a quick numbers game. I have a couple numbers up here just to wake you guys up. I don't know about you, it's quite early for me. So we have 70, 900, 1.1 trillion, 2.5 trillion. What do you think this 70 is about? And this goes into what I'm going to talk about. Any guesses? Mm, very close. So 70 countries linked. Uh huh. So maybe that gives you a good clue about what I mean by the opportunities that are coming up as China continues to develop. All right. So that's your first clue. Second clue, 900. What could 900 be linked to? Mm. Projects. Okay, 900 projects that are planned and underway. Anyone already have a good idea of what I'm going to talk about next? 1.1 trillion. Yeah, exactly. Right. So 1.1 trillion USD already committed to infrastructure projects by three large development banks, AIB, New Development Bank, and then 2.5 trillion USD a year expected from trade within countries along BRI within the next decade. Right. So when companies are looking at their location, they're looking to be close to their clients, they're looking to be close to their suppliers, they're looking to be close to their partners, but they also need to start thinking about the future, right? If logistics costs are getting smaller and smaller, maybe um, it would make sense for some companies to look further inland. We all hear that, for example, Chongqing, right? is going to be at the center of this movement between Europe and China going forward. So this is just an idea that I want to put out here because if we're going to think long term about location and relocation where companies are going, we'll probably, I expect, see more of a movement from here, eastern China, more inland. right? Because you can see all of these different connections, all of these different routes might change the game for a lot of companies. Okay, Any, any questions on that? Good? Cool. I hope you enjoyed that game. I did. All right, and then gains in logistics efficiency, right? You're gonna go, you're gonna be able to go much easier from Chongqing to all of these different places. You're gonna see <coughs> a reduction in time and costs and maybe going through BRI would be a more efficient solution for some companies than actually having to go through the port in Shanghai. Right. Okay. So going on, uh, where are companies considering relocation? There's a few places, and I've kind of bracketed it into these four different options. Number one is nationally, they can go far, like along the BRI, maybe Chongqing, Chengdu, right? 
They can go close nationally, maybe to other places in Zhejiang and Jiangsu provinces, right? Suzhou, Kunshan, those places have all been very popular recently. They can go internationally far, let's say Vietnam, for instance, is not uncommon, or they can go uh, internationally closer than that. Okay? All right. So um, this goes into the second part of why relocate, and I'm not going to talk too much about this regulatory tightening because I think Alan has a very good presentation to cover most of that. Um, so if I go quickly, it's because she's going to talk further about that later. Number one is protections against environmental pollution, right? We have some main pollution industries in China, and we see a lot of them starting to get pushed out from, let's say, the main Shanghai areas, right? Um, for example, if we look at the chemical industry, which has seen a lot of the brunt of this new movement, they're going from probably eastern coastal cities to industry zones surrounding those cities to maybe rural areas, and maybe later on they would even consider more seriously inland and western China. Okay. Number two for regulatory is in industry clustering. We've seen the government push for this quite hard. Here are the top 10 industrial clusters in China. I'm not going to go through all of them. But here is an example, the automotive industry. Right? You see certain clusters starting to form. And we believe that these clusters will also be further encouraged by the free trade zones, the seven new free trade zones that were announced in 2016. Each free trade zone has its own specific industry specialization or place within the BRI uh, initiative. Okay, moving on. And so what are the services that we can provide for you when we're looking at basically all of this information, right? We have a location analysis and site selection service that our business intelligence department has been working on quite hard for the past year. We basically provide a four-step support package and we're looking at a number of different metrics that would affect your relocation. So from real estate in terms of how much is this going to cost me, what is my rent, to where is the location, to um, what are the different amenities that I need, like how high does the roof need to be, Do, is the water an appropriate cost, right? To connectivity, am I going to be near the highways that I need to be? Am I going to be near the ports that I need to be? Uh, to the workforce, right? Am I going to have the same kind of labor that I'm dependent on now? To the regulations, am I going to be allowed in this industry? Uh, am I going to be allowed in this industry in this space, for example? Or am I going to be asked to move within, let's say, six months or maybe like two years, right? Because most of the time we see our clients don't want to move because it causes a big problem in terms of their manufacturing. Once you move, you're expecting at least some time in which you're not able to produce, right? And that can be costly. Okay, and then we take all of these metrics after having talked to you and we put them together through a screening process. And through our cooperations with different industrial zones, especially in Jiangsu, Zhejiang, and even in Shenzhen, Dongguan, Huizhou, we're able to reach out directly to them and say, are you able to provide an appropriate space for our clients in this area? <coughs> Do you have any questions? Any questions so far? OK, and then afterwards, we put all this data together into an easy to read PDF report give an assessment based on these different metrics, and then go on site visits with you. And so you can see what a typical location search process looks like from very phase one to phase two to um, business advisory services, because afterwards, if you do decide to go with the location, we can provide help with the negotiations as well as the address due diligence and make everything as seamless for you as possible. Okay, um, how are we doing on time? We are good? Okay, great. So I have a couple of case studies that I think would be helpful to kind of illustrate what all, these, all this means, right? The first one, we did a location analysis and site selection project for an Israeli manufacturing firm. Um, they're based in Shenzhen, but they were considering moving to Shanghai or considering moving to a cheaper location in Shenzhen. The main reason was land cost. 
Um, they wanted a final assembly facility to accommodate their evolving business, and they had a search in both locations. And because we have professionals in both locations, we were able to carry that out. We conducted a search covering these areas, Shenzhen, Dongguan, Huizhou, uh, Kunshan, Suzhou, Jiaxing, Jushan, and Pinghu. Uh, we reached out to them. We collected data that allowed us to assess the location for the client, saving them that time. And then we scheduled site visits for the uh, shortlisted locations and helped with the translation as well. In the end, the client ultimately decided to go with a location in Dongguan. Uh, they commissioned us for the address due diligence and that project is currently still underway. Here we have another interesting case study, this time for an Italian manufacturing firm. They're actually based in China, but they're considering moving to Southeast Asia. Uh, particularly to uh, Vietnam, and they want to consider following the <coughs> China plus one strategy. And because we have an office in Ho Chi Minh City and a business intelligence team that's doing quite well there, we were able to carry this out. Here we profiled the relative strengths in Cambodia, Indonesia, Vietnam, and gave them a comprehensive assessment of all three countries. Then we reached out to the industrial zones and contacted the representatives on their behalf. And we also assisted them with local language search and logistics support to their site visits. In the end, the client is currently assessing its options and they're looking to go ahead with the relocation in the third quarter of 2018. Okay, so here we are. Yes. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed that presentation. If you have any further questions, please feel free to Email me, call me, here's our company, we chat QR code so you can scan that and keep in touch with us as well. All right, thank you.